Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 4 for June the 28th, 2020. We are still in Unit 1 entitled Wisdom in Proverbs. And our topic for today, uh, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is entitled An Invitation to Wisdom. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalm 119. Uh, verses 97 through 104. Our background scripture is taken from uh, Proverbs chapter 9 and we'll be studying today from um, the book of Proverbs chapter 9 verses 1 through 6, uh, verses 8 through 10, and verses 13 through 18. Our key verse reads, Leave your simple ways and you will live walk in the way of insight as taken from uh, Proverbs chapter 9 verse 6 and our lesson aims today number one is to <clears throat> compare and contrast the call and promise of wisdom with those of folly secondly to desire to walk the path of wisdom and receive its benefits avoiding the peril of foolishness and then thirdly to grow in the fear and knowledge of the Lord as the first step in walking in the way of wisdom we have three outlines today that are a part of our lesson uh, the first outline is entitled wisdom's house a second outline is entitled wisdom's beginning and our third outline is entitled Folly's house. And so we are privileged today and thankful for another opportunity to be able to uh, come to you in this format and to share our lesson with you today. And we pray that uh, you're safe, your family is safe. We're praying still for our country, uh, for this world. We're praying for those in leadership. Uh, we are praying for those who uh, have been affected. Uh, with this virus and we know that God is still on the throne and so we have to remain prayerful and hopeful uh, even in the face of adversity but we have quite a bit to cover today in our lesson and we want to be able to um, do a thorough job of sharing uh, as much material as we can with you we um, are prayerful that you would get your Bible and uh, be prepared to take some notes. Uh, we're certainly going to provide uh, reference scriptures for your study that we might be able to gain some insight uh, from this lesson today from the book of Proverbs. But the biblical context for this lesson is as follows. Proverbs chapter 9 marks the conclusion the first major section of the book. In this chapter Solomon concluded his call um, begun in chapter 1 for his listeners to accept God's wisdom. So to do so uh, Solomon once again personified wisdom as a woman. So I refer to as uh, Lady Wisdom uh, for, ver for verse 1 and then compare this personification of wisdom in today's lesson with those in Proverbs chapter 1 verses 20 through 33 and Proverbs chapter 8 verses 1 through 36 and so we want to be able to provide a stark contrast uh, to the positive way of Lady Wisdom Solomon uh, introduced another woman I refer to as Mistress Folly and so Lady Wisdom offered a feast um, of life verses 5 through 6 that would give those at the table a righteous understanding of life and also in doing so um, they would be propelled to walk in the path of righteousness that was not the case for mistress folly she offered a dinner of death uh, those are covered in verses 17 and 18 and so we hope that uh, this uh, description here of Lady Wisdom and uh, Mistress Folly will go a long way to helping us unpack the benefits of uh, godly wisdom 
uh, versus foolishness and that's essentially what we're talking about in terms of these uh, two personifications of a woman but I want to just make sure that we understand the book of Proverbs it's, it's not a book um, of tips and tricks uh, it passes on a core knowledge uh, and experience that God says we must have if we are to live successfully so uh, these Proverbs are not merely old sayings that concern people in in some far off lands but universal principles that apply to all people uh, of all time so uh, these proverbs speak of they speak to modern problems as much as to uh, the ancient ones because uh, they concern human nature and God's ways and it's important to understand that human nature has not changed uh, since Solomon's time uh, neither has God's uh, only the landscape around us has changed and so we want to keep that in mind there is a reality of this lesson uh, that faces all of us uh, that confronts uh, uh, the very day-to-day -day activities that we encounter uh, because of the fact that we have to make decisions and that's what we want to be able to uh, draw from this lesson today and we're going to unpack some things uh, for us in a way to help us to understand not just the contrast of wisdom versus foolishness but some of the players if you will uh, uh, of who's involved in or engaged with us uh, that prompts us to uh, causes us to make uh, decisions but I wanted to share something with you very quickly uh, Spirit of Law was reminding me of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30 we want to go there very quickly I want to read just a few verses and you can take these scriptures down this this will be uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30 uh, verses 15 through 18 and so one of the, the, the things that God has done with uh, his creation is to allow us uh, to make decisions and so this was something in addition to all of the other um, commands if you will or statutes and ordinances that God gave to Israel this uh, was striking to me uh, and as we compare this lesson to the fact that uh, we have to make decisions we need to also understand what's on the table and so from Deuteronomy chapter 30 and I want to go down to verse 15 and this is God talking here uh, through Moses see I have set before you today life and good death and evil verse 16 and that I command you today to love the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land uh, which you go to possess verse 17 but if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them I announce to you today that you shall surely perish you shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess and you can read some more of that at your leisure but this uh, uh, lesson outline today of the text the passages of scripture that we're giving you today sharing with you from the book of Proverbs um, and if you have been following us for the last uh, three weeks we have been talking about uh, the practical application of God's Word in light of the fact that uh, we have to make decisions and, and, and those decisions uh, come from several places and of uh, uh, discernment for us and so we want to make sure that we understand that but we will uh, dig a little deeper into this uh, contrast between Lady Wisdom and Mistress Folly. Our first outline is entitled Wisdom's House. This is taken from uh, Proverbs chapter 9 verses 1 through 6 and I want to read this 
from the NIV translation. The Bible says, Wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, verse 5, Come, eat my food, and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways, and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. And so again in chapter 9, uh, we see the contrast between uh, Lady Wisdom uh, and Mistress Folly. Uh, we'll uh, cover that in verses 13 through uh, 18 as we get a little bit further in this lesson. But Solomon provided a contrast uh, in their houses. Lady Wisdom uh, built a sturdy house, able to withstand whatever tricks Satan has in mind. Uh, the reason the house is so sturdy is because uh, of its seven pillars. So Bible scholars have uh, debated the significance of the seven pillars. But in keeping uh, with the fact that this number uh, signifies or references completion, Solomon um, described Lady Wisdom as a good housekeeper. Uh, the wisdom uh, meal she prepares are done in, in a meticulous way. They are not rushed meals that might lead to mental indigestion. Instead she has the right seasoning and adds water um, to the wine probably as much as one to eight to reduce its intoxication ability. I just want to pause right here and so uh, how do we do things uh, is what we want to be able to draw from today. What is the mindset? And so I wanted to just share with you, at least put you on a path of, of, of the fact that all of us are subject to hearing voices. Um, we are subject to hearing things uh, that sometimes uh, we are not able to discern. Uh, who is speaking to us uh, and so as we talk about this lesson and the, the fact that we have to make decisions we cannot overlook the fact that our hearing is also in play uh, if I can use that term is also on the table because many times when we make decisions it is based on what we are hearing and, and sometimes if we're not able to discern uh, what we're hearing and I don't want you to think you're crazy because you're hearing things uh, uh, but you do uh, 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 have to be able to discern and this is a complexity of, of making decisions and so I, I want to just share this with you so when we think about who are the players I said that earlier uh, if I can use that term who are the players uh, of 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 uh, 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 things that we might hear, or that we might sense, or that we might believe is speaking to us. But God is one of those voices that you will hear. I want you to look at John chapter fifteen, uh, verses three through four, and you can read as much as that at your leisure. But I just want to let you know that. Uh, uh, one of the things that you may be hearing that you are probably hearing uh, is God. God is talking, right? Uh, one of the things even now we're, we're reading scripture to you uh, from the word of God. So God is talking to us. The other uh, uh, player, if you will, would be your flesh. I want you to look at James chapter 1 verses 13 through 15. Uh, sometimes our flesh is calling out. Uh, uh, or, or lusting for something that, that we have to make a decision about. I'm going somewhere, so I hope you understand that, that uh, what, what we are presenting to you in a deeper way uh, to help you understand that you're going to have to make a decision about what God is telling you, and you're going to have to make a decision about your, what your flesh 
is desiring. So keep that in mind. Uh, then we come to the devil. The devil is talking uh, uh, to us and instructing us. Matthew chapter 4 uh, verses 1 through 11. And you might also see the parallel for that in Luke chapter 4. You all remember uh, uh, Satan was taking uh, the devil various places uh, if you will in the wilderness and talking to him and testing him uh, uh, if he was the son of man he should do thus and so so you will have to confront or you will be uh, uh, confronted by the devil that you will need to make a decision and then lastly and this is certainly not all inclusive but the other factor or player in this decision uh, making process is other people uh, and these could be relationships these could, these could be friends these, these could be family members I want you to look at Psalm uh, chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 and so all of these things uh, demonstrate for me uh, uh, when we make decisions or we are confronted uh, uh, to uh, make decision or to be able to discern what we should do these are some areas that you're going to have to determine uh, where this information is coming from before you make that move or before you make that decision so we have God we have our flesh we have the devil and we have other people and so uh, uh, this is now so critical for us that we have God's wisdom because wisdom is calling out for us to make righteous decisions in all of these areas no matter who uh, the individual or entity is speaking we have to be able to make wise or godly decisions about the things that we hear or that we are instructed to do and so if we are not going to have or we don't have lady wisdom uh, to lead us in the way that we should go uh, then mistress folly right is the other equation and so uh, uh, we're going to get caught um, and all of us uh, uh, I certainly have made mistakes in my life based on a particular matter uh, if I disobey God then I violated what he told me to do then I would fall in one of these other categories it could have been my flesh that dictated uh, it could have been the devil or it could have been other people and so we have to be able to be armed with the Word of God so when these things are uh, when we're hearing these things many times when we make decisions we do not consult the Word of God uh, you notice I read God's name first and I gave you the Word of God and that's where we have to go when we uh, are confronted uh, with decisions because as I read to you in Deuteronomy chapter 30 death is available uh, 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 death is on the table of our decisions and uh, whenever someone passes uh, 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 those of you all that understand uh, uh, a death certificate uh, uh, then a reason has to be placed on that certificate for that death uh, uh, and so an investigation has to be conducted as to why that individual died and so uh, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 30 uh, uh, again uh, God is saying to Israel uh, I've given you some things to do and so uh, or some commands or some statutes and some ordinances so if you don't abide by them and you die this will be the reason why you died or this will be the investigation this will be the finding of the investigation that you perish because of XYZ and so this is the same thing today when we don't do uh, the things that that God commands us to do we can die spiritually and we can also die physically and so it's imperative that we are using uh, the Word of God not just for theological purposes or, or for head knowledge but that we're using it for heart knowledge and that we're using it as a means of life 
that we're using it as a means to extend our days. I hope this is making sense to you and this is what this invitation uh, is all about. And so wisdom, as we read to you, has set the table and she is uh, recounting or personified in this first outline what she's offering. Uh, and, and, and that it, it, it will help you, uh, it, it, as it says in, in verse 6, leave your simple ways and you will live. You see, and so it's very important. All of us want to live. But how we go about that means everything. And how we make decisions will, uh, uh, in many times, dictate uh, how we're going to live and if we're going to be successful in life. Uh, and so it's very important that we uh, uh, do a better job uh, of hearing. And sometimes, and I found this to be relevant in, uh, in believers, is that we are not able sometimes to discern uh, who is speaking to us. And this is something that you might want to go in prayer about if you're having issues uh, hearing God and, and, and understanding what God is telling you to do, then ask God concerning those things. And so this is the, uh, the key uh, to life, is, is, is making decisions. Uh, and, 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 and you and I cannot escape the fact that we're going to have to make decisions. Uh, we not only make decisions for ourselves, but the decisions that we do make can affect our families, our children, uh, everything that we touch, uh, a decision um, can impact that. So I hope that you understand that. And so there's so what are some ways that folly leads to destruction while wisdom is life giving? And so we've given you some scripture to help uh, kind of unpack that question. The second outline is entitled uh, Wisdom's Beginning. Uh, this is taken from Proverbs chapter 9 verses 8 through 10 and I hope that you will read all of uh, the ninth chapter. It's not very long, the book of Proverbs and, and just uh, 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 take all of these things to task uh, that uh, the way Solomon, the Lord is using Solomon uh, and this, his, his style of language if you will, it it, it has the capacity to draw the reader into exactly what is Solomon saying here. So uh, Proverbs chapter 9 verses 8 through 10 again from the NIV translation. Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise and they will love you. Verse 9 instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add uh, to their learning. Verse 10, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And so uh, as we learn and as we uh, are able to discern the scriptures, uh, we have to be careful. And this is something that uh, in terms of uh, rebuking people, and I want to share something with you from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Um, that's relevant to this first verse uh, sometimes people are not ready to accept correction they are not ready uh, to accept rebuke which simply means to reprimand or to censure uh, uh, and sometimes as uh, my dad would say don't let the first thing come up come out and so we have to be careful uh, uh, when we are engaging people uh, we want to draw people in uh, uh, in a way with love and kindness uh, uh, but when people are mocking and, uh, and they are having uh, issues or uh, rebelling against the Word of God they are not able to discern uh, perhaps what you have learned uh, in your experience and so uh, one of the things that we have to pray for in terms of dealing with other people is timing. Uh, we don't talk too much about that. Everybody wants to go and evangelize and those types of things and there's nothing wrong with that. But timing is critical. Uh, sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you to wait. Uh, it's, in good, it's good to engage God when you're going to speak with someone who you believe 
uh, is walking contrary to the Word of God. And there's a way uh, of application to uh, address those things. But uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I won't go there, but you can read that verses 13 through 16. And one of the reasons why we are unsuccessful with mockers is because they perhaps are natural minded. And so they won't be able to understand the spiritual food, if you will, or the spiritual application of what you're saying. And so it will create uh, an issue for you uh, trying to relate spiritual things uh, to natural people. And the Bible is clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that they won't be able to receive it. Jesus said that in his upper room discourse, uh, with his disciples about the world and, 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 and their interaction as disciples and how they would be hated and different things like that. So we have to be careful about that. And so timing is critical uh, to that approach. And so I want you to keep that in mind. A uh, Rebuke a wise man and they will love you. And so sometimes people are receptive to the things that we say and they uh, will uh, draw to you and they will learn more from you and this is the beauty of of uh, of uh, youth being able to uh, uh, appreciate the aged or the experience uh, if you will and being able to draw from these experiences and being able to share things that uh, uh, um, those simple individuals or simple minded individuals would be able to avoid the pitfalls in life and so verse 9 instruct the wise and they will be wiser still and these these types of attributes uh, that we have to be mindful of there are people who tend to flock to us and uh, and, and we want to be able to give out the right information and so so we want to be able to help that individual mature uh, in the way that they should go teach the righteous and they will add to their learning this is beautiful uh, this is the uh, part about that wisdom and that timing if we let the Lord help us uh, will we'll, we'll create uh, a better effect of those who we want to see grow in the Lord and then the fear the reverential fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding uh, you know that's that's what uh, Sunday school and Bible class and even our uh, uh, virtual experiences now due to the pandemic uh, that uh, we're able to flock to the Word of God in a way that we're trying to to learn we're reverencing God even uh, 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 through live streaming and things like that so we can continue to grow uh, in the knowledge of the truth but we have to reverence God as God so um, in verses 7 through 9 uh, this is not a part of the printed text. Solomon taught two contrasting lessons. First in verse 7, Solomon instructed his listeners not to waste time, uh, waste their time rebuking mockers and the wicked. That's why I gave you 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, they would just be wasting their time. So this is a lesson today. We have to be mindful of who we're talking to and ask God for uh, the, to present the timing for us. Um, and so it's 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 important that we learn these principles uh, so we don't create uh, issues for ourselves so uh, the wise recognize that uh, uh, we're not trying to tear them down we're rather trying to build them up uh, when we rebuke them in love that's the key uh, there's no uh, uh, where in scripture where we can't rebuke we can do a lot of things I believe second Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 um, through 17 uh, helps us to understand how to use the Word of God and what situation uh, uh, and sometimes uh, we do have to rebuke uh, we have to reprimand uh, individuals uh, or the conduct is what we're after we're not after the individual per se so I hope you keep those things in mind so love begets love uh, that's the idea so they will not reject instruction they will gravitate uh, toward it and so when you see people coming around you and they, they, they are enjoying what you're saying tell them the truth we have an obligation to do that uh, don't ruin that hearer uh, uh, that hearing opportunity if you will 
that God has presented you with. So what are some examples in your own life of how the fear of the Lord contributed to your walking in wisdom? And so uh, I always uh, liken this uh, application uh, in terms of ministry. Uh, the first person that we have to minister to is God. And so God has the ability and he will pull your coattail uh, if he is not pleased about a particular thing. And so uh, we, we have uh, been taught, uh, God has raised us uh, to be teachers, leaders, and so on. And so we are obligated uh, by God to do the right thing. And reverencing him uh, and his word uh, is first base. Uh, for all of this maturity and so uh, our last outline is entitled uh, Folly's House right so we've talked about Lady Wisdom now we want to talk about uh, Mistress Folly and again from the uh, NIV uh, translation this is uh, Proverbs chapter 9 verses 13 through 80, 18 uh, Folly is an unruly woman she is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house on the seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Verse 16. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know that the dead are there, that her guests are deep in the realm of the dead. You know, we talk about these things uh, uh, and, and how these things are manifest uh, in our lives today, that people are dying uh, based on a decision. And sometimes it's very uh, difficult uh, 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 to unpack the mind of an individual and the decisions that they made. A lot of times we get the the aftermath, if you will, but what went into the process of this individual and, they, and the decision that they made uh, that cost them their life? And so uh, without having the knowledge of God, we're not able to defend ourselves. And if you are not able, if you're hearing things and, and you're not able to understand who's talking to you, not even your own flesh, you don't understand that your flesh is rising up and, uh, uh, and you don't know how to combat that situation. Uh, these are the things that lead us down that path. Uh, as Mistress Folly would, would, would have it, that she's unruly. Uh, she really knows nothing. She's calling out uh, uh, to do things or presenting us with decisions that we have to make. And because we are unlearned, uneducated, simple-minded, uh, not indoctrinated with the Word of God, we are easy prey uh, uh, for this type of player uh, who has uh, presented everything superficially that it looks good but when you get over in it uh, death is there and so uh, in reference to the first part of Proverbs Solomon sought to show how sensible it was to accept Lady Wisdom's invitation by contrasting with Mistress Folly invitation and so this uh, personification here, uh, Mistress Folly, is an unruly woman. Uh, Mistress Folly would resort to seduction and not to reason in her invitation. She would attempt to make something bad look good. Uh, not unlike the, uh, an unscrupulous used car salesman, uh, Lady Wisdom uh, as the personification of God's goodness and mistress folly as the same for Satan uh, and his evil. And so as I shared with you earlier, we have to be able to discern uh, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Uh, don't just follow your 
first mind, if you will. Don't follow your first inclination. Don't follow the first thing that somebody might tell you to do uh, uh, without fact-checking those things and certainly if you're hearing things if God is talking to you you should be able to find that in his word uh, uh, and so uh, if the devil is talking to you we know he's an accuser we know he's a liar uh, we know a lot of things about him from scripture and so as a child of God you need to know the works of God and you need to know the works of the devil because we are going to have to make decisions and if Jesus was confronted, Satan confronted Jesus, you and I, we, we don't have a chance or stand a chance. We don't have it like that uh, where we're not going to have to deal with the things that are presented to us by Satan. I should also tell you that in Genesis chapter 3, it talks about Satan as being more crafty than any other created thing. So he doesn't care about your anointing. He doesn't care how long you've been in the ministry. He doesn't care how long you've been singing in the choir. He doesn't care how long you've been on the usher board. It doesn't matter to him. If he, if he confronted the Savior, you're next. right? So we need to understand these things uh, in, in a practical way because we have to deal with them every day. Uh, we are uh, uh, all having to deal with temptations. And I, I, I've said this over the years, everything that the Lord delivered you from, let's just, let's just settle it here. Everything that the Lord delivered you from is your battleground. Keep that in mind. Everything that the Lord rescued you from, that you are testifying to, that God brought you up, you're still going to have to deal with the temptation of that past even though it's been removed that regenerate man that you are a woman that you are now being saved uh, you should understand that that unregenerate nature is walking right alongside of that regenerate uh, uh, individual spirit and so the unregenerate spirit is looking for an opportunity to overtake the regenerate I hope you can understand that. And so just because you're saved and you're highly favored doesn't mean you can't come under attack where you have to make a decision or use the discernment that God has given you to uh, 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 determine who's talking to you. And then secondly, what are you going to do with that information? So it doesn't matter about those things that uh, we like to ascribe to in terms of the devil confronting us even your flesh you have to rebuke you when you get out of hand you can rebuke the enemy or you can rebuke the flesh that rises up to take you in another direction contrary to what the Lord has given you to do so we are stewards uh, over our own bodies God has given us that to know how to uh, uh, deal with uh, 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 our own flesh if you will and so we have to confront these things and so this is the reality of this proverb here this is the reality of our walk uh, with the Lord this is the reality of life and death and so there is no guarantee if we make the wrong decision uh, uh, that we'll be able to get back you know, this is the thing about, uh, well, I'll just step over here for a little, a little while and I'll come back. Where is the guarantee in that? And so we, we need to understand, uh, and I believe that uh, uh, if God was telling uh, uh, Israel, even back over in Deuteronomy chapter 30, that they could die based on what they did or based on how they decided to obey him or not. So uh, this is a reality for us today. So I hope that you would uh, keep this thing in mind. So Mistress Folly uh, was not industrious. She was deceitful. She thought it easier to steal a meal than prepare one. Her stolen meal was symbolic of life's secret pleasures, right? That are not pleasures at all 
but intense sin of the flesh. Remember I said that to you earlier. This is one of the things on the table. Uh, stolen water is an allusion to a man who commits adultery with a prostitute. None of Mistress Folly's guests realize that they are already doomed. They are hell bound just like the frog in the pan over low heat. It is just a matter of time before those seduced by Mistress Folly are cooked. I hope that you can appreciate the commentary that is offered in the lesson. Uh, but there is an opportunity for us today. Um, and we're going to have prayer as I seek to close. Uh, but the Word of God, if it's anything, it's practical. It has to be used. It has to be able to be taken off the pages and incorporated into our everyday lives. And what better way to do that than the ability to be able to make a decision? And we all have things that we are deciding or even thinking about right now. But we're going to pray and we're going to ask God to help us, right? We're going to ask God to help us in the decision decision making process, right? And I, I hate these snap judgments, if you will, or snap decisions. I like to think about things uh, a little bit, uh, consult God about that. Um, it doesn't matter how much I study and how much I read. I still want to talk to God and, and, and get his input. Uh, and God wants to be, if, if we know anything about Israel, God wanted to be involved in their everyday life. All of their decision making processes. Uh, God wanted to be involved. Uh, and so we need to understand that today that God wants to be involved in the things that uh, we are thinking about doing. And we have to be able to hear from the Lord uh, in a way that uh, we understand that either he is supportive of the things that we are doing or he is not. And if he tells you no, that is a safeguard for you and for me. Uh, he may not tell you why he's telling you no, and you probably don't want to know that, right? But if he's telling you no, it's for your own good. But if God gives you the green light, that will be successful. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you for your word today. We thank you for those who are listening. We thank you for those who are considering. We thank you for those who are facing decisions of all sorts and all kinds that could potentially affect not just them, but everyone in their world. And Father, we are praying that you would look and have mercy on our mindsets and the decisions that we intend to make. Uh, we, we pray, God, that you would give us a helmet that would protect us, oh God, protect our loyalty and, 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 and our faithfulness to you. We, we need a mind, oh God, that, that would, would be protected, oh God, from infiltration that would cause us to make the wrong decision. We need you today to help us in the things that we are deciding to do. And we realize today that you can help us cook a meal and you could help us with salvation. And whatever it is in between, Father, we pray, even if we want to decide what uh, uh, clothes to put on, you're able to govern everything and lead us in the way of righteousness. And we thank you for it today. And we are praying for the families of those who are listening to today. We are praying for those who are facing uh, some very difficult challenges whereby they have to make decisions. We just need you in our everyday lives and we invite you in uh, to bring the wisdom that we that we need today and you know we need it Father that we might be able to make good decisions. We are continuing to pray for our country and pray for the men and women oh God who have been affected and for those oh God who are on the front lines and who are uh, uh, facing death every day that they might save lives. We thank you for all that you've done. We can't forget about Jesus, for it had not been for him. 
we would not be here this day. And we'll be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.